Hey everyone, welcome back to another live stream. Today I got an action packed episode, course, training, tutorial, whatever you want to call it. We are going to be talking about Jira service management. This is going to be a somewhat in depth beginner's guide. And so if you've never used Jira service management, JSM, or maybe you've heard it as ITSM, um, Jira service management is a pretty cool product. It's under the Jira umbrella but it does serve a completely different purpose. And so I'm gonna be walking you through some of the super, super basics and then kind of show you the ins and outs of the application. This is going to be considered a beginner's guide. And so make sure you are subscribed, make sure you drop a like, make sure you're commenting in the chat, make sure you're doing all the awesome things that you should be doing to help get this video in front of more people so that even more people can benefit from these kind of trainings. All right, so first let's do a little bit of housekeeping. <clears throat> Let me. My camera's a little high. So I'm gonna drop the camera a little bit. Uh, just doing an audio check, it looks like audio is good. And then I got the comments on the side. So at any point, if you just wanna say hello, um, if you have any questions about anything that I cover, let me know, I am monitoring the chat and I'd be more than happy to to talk about um, pretty much whatever, whatever comes to mind. So <clears throat> let's get started with the documentation here. Uh, I am going to jump straight into Atlassian's website here for Jira Service Management. Now, again, if you haven't heard of Jira Service Management, or I'm just gonna call it JSM from this point forward because calling it the whole thing, it's a tongue full and I need to I need to last a whole hour here and it, it just gets straining while I'm talking so much for, for an hour. So JSM is not like Jira. So a lot of people have the misconception that because it's called Jira, it's going to be the same, but it's not. It's a completely different product and it serves a completely different use case. Now, with that said, both products live in the same like user interface. So I can switch between a Jira project and a Jira service management project like that. It's not like jumping between Confluence and Jira where you basically change the entire UI. It's not like that. You wouldn't know, and I'll show you some examples later, but you really wouldn't know to the untrained eye whether you're in a JSM project or a Jira project. Um, it, so it's that close in comparison and with respect to the UI, but the functionalities, the use cases are very, very different. So let's start off with looking at last year's documentation here. And let's kind of just give you a rundown of what JSM is. Then we'll look at documentation. We'll talk about pricing and then we're gonna jump into the tool um, for the rest of the training here. So JSM is, an open collaborative platform. Um, it lets, it's basically in a nutshell, an IT tool. So if you've ever heard of like Snow or like ServiceNow, or you've heard of Zendesk is a popular one. Um, there's basically anywhere where you're capturing like maybe customer um, bugs or just internal bugs, or you just wanna capture like questions or, or have a form for folks to complete. Um, Jira service management is going to give you that capability. It's going to give you some a, a good amount of power to be able to have like a, a front where folks can fill out information and then you can have like an attack team, a tiger team that can then go in and triage and figure out how to solve these specific problems. So that's kind of what JSM is used for. Um, it's If you're in the premium version of JSM, so if you're paying the big bucks, we'll, we'll go over the pricing in a second. But if you're paying for the premium exceptional pricing that they charge, because this thing is worth an arm and a leg, um, you also get other things like asset and configuration, asset and configurations, change management, and incident management. Now, we will not be talking about those things in this video because that is really like a, a 500 level course. It is not beginners. Heck, it's not even intermediate asset management change management and incident management with respect to what's built into this solution of jira is a very advanced topic so let me know in the comment section if you are interested in that um, maybe in the future i'll do something but it is a very very in-depth very expensive um, very complete package that um, atlassian has put together here and and not through any thing that they've made. A lot of this has been acquisitions. In fact, um, if I'm not mistaken, the outage that Atlassian had not too long ago was due to the fact that they were transitioning, I think it was back in April, they were transitioning from the old 
Insight app that they had acquired and now into this more native interface. And that's when they kind of ran into some trouble. So anyways, that's JSM here. And there's just a bunch of marketing spiel over here. Nothing, nothing worth knowing, but I do want to kind of address this. So this will kind of transition us into our next topic, which is the pricing. So what do you get? And this is really interesting to see this, that I'm not seeing the standard version. So actually, let me go to this page. Yeah, because this page here is a little bit more thorough. If you see this page, we see the free and we see the premium, but they kind of dropped off the standard, which is usually what like 90% of the teams that I work with have. Um, the a premium version is something that's top tier. Not a lot of folks that I know have the top tier, but very, very few people actually opt in for all this extra money because you can see $47 a person is quite expensive. And so you are doubling, more than doubling your price here, which is, is ridiculous. Like I think this price is ludicrous here. Um, but anyway, so let's kind of take a look at the features and see what you get with um, comparing the free version, which is what I'm going to show, which is what I have, versus standard, which again is what mostly everybody has, versus the premium, which is what, if you got some deep pockets, you're going to be on premium. So let's see. So we got a user limit of agents. So this is a big change from Jira because in Jira, everything's everybody's a user. But in Jira service management, everybody is an agent. Now... Because both of these products live in that same interface and you actually use the same access management of admin.atlassian.com to manage both, things can get a little bit confusing. Um, in a nutshell, though, for every individual that you are paying for a license for, you will be able to basically type in their name. And then for each of their names, you can select, there's a little slider where you can turn on or opt in to pay for their Jira software license, their Confluence license, and then their JSM. So if you do enable the JSM one, you're essentially making them an agent and you're opting to either pay zero, if you have three or less, $21 or $47, depending on, on again, what your specific needs are. But that's kind of where the limit is. Now, I should also point out that Jira's license limits like 20,000 or some crazy number like that. This is 5,000. This is significantly less. And so with that, the individuals that use JSM, you should really, really pick them out. They should be only a select subset. Um, I've seen a lot of teams do this where everybody gets all the licenses and these, these bills stack up real high. You, if you're doing agile, <clears throat> if you're doing the whole backlog, sprint planning, all that great stuff, those folks should be on Jira software. You should be paying their $5, $8, whatever, however much that license is for them. Your agents, the folks using JSM, this should be a very narrow group of people. These are going to be people that are doing something substantial, substantially different than agile sprints and backlogs and all that stuff. These folks are literally... They're just working these tickets. They're in these queues. So not everybody should have it. And so because of that, it kind of helps balance this price out a little bit because you don't, if you have a team of 100, you don't need to buy 100 of these licenses. You really need like maybe two or three, depending on how many actual folks are going to be using Jira service management. Customer limit. Now this right here, this customer limit is why you use Jira service management. The... Um, that one advantage over Jira is that in Jira, everybody's got to pay to play. In JSM, the folks working the tickets, the stuff that comes in, you got to pay to play. But anybody can submit tickets. And I literally mean anybody. Obviously, you have some configuration changes, which we'll get into in future videos. But for the most part, you don't need a license to submit a JSM request which is really where what's very enticing because pretty much if you have a company of like 500 users and you want them all, like you want to manage an IT department so that if like their computers break or they need a new laptop or something like that, if you're trying to track all those kind of things, JSM is going to basically let you have one tool where a couple of dedicated folks from your IT department are going to be able to order laptops, ship laptops, do whatever they got to do troubleshoot the laptops, 
but everybody, all 500 of your employees will be able to submit requests. So this right here is really key. And one of the reasons, again, why maybe this is why these licenses are so expensive because you don't need one for everyone and you get a lot of free usage. So I've been, I've worked with teams where, I don't know, you have two, three, 400 people being able to submit um, tickets and requests. So that's one of the key differences there. As we sc scroll our way down, site limit doesn't really matter. It just means that you can only have one URL. Um, your support team is in case things go south. Um, that's basically <laughs> when they'll help you. Um, your uptime SLA, this is interesting. So that last thing guarantees you nothing. If you're on the free or standard, it's not until you get to the premium, which is really, really interesting because it's 99.9 .9 is a lie. I guarantee you it's a lie because in April, I experienced like a one week outage and some folks experienced like up to two weeks of outages. That does not equal 99%, 99.9% uptime. And so, yeah, this right here is a big fat lie from Atlassian. Uh, big no-no. Uh, the file storage, uh, this is only if you're uploading files. I don't typically upload too many things, but let's get down to some other notifications. So you get unlimited notifications on standard. Whoops. You get um, an embeddable email and embeddable widget support, which is good. A service portal. We're going to cover a lot of the stuff, forms, the workflows, queues, SLA management. This We'll cover this in detail here um, later today. Reporting, automation. So pretty much all, as you can see, going across the bar here, whether you're on the free or all the way to the $47 a month version, you are going to be paying, you're going to get pretty much all the features. The only thing you don't get is this global and multi-project automation, which is not a deal breaker. You just make the automation rule twice or thrice or however many times you got to do it, but it's not that big of a deal breaker. The incident management here, this stuff over here, you do get a lot of it. You get internal stakeholders. Um, you get just general monitoring, incident escalation. Well, the last time I tried to use this, it didn't work. Um, Post-incident reviews and on-call management. This is all good stuff, but some of these advanced things like conference calls, investigations, heartbeat monitoring. These are going to be reserved for those folks paying a lot of money. Um, same thing's happening over here uh, under the change management. We got a couple more things that are like premium only, like deploy gating. But as you can see, you're going to get a lot of functionality. And this is one thing that I really do like about Atlassian is they do give you a lot. <clears throat> they give you a lot of free stuff. <laughs> they want you to use the product. And it's once you exceed those three agents that you got to bump yourself up to the standard. But even for 20 bucks a month here, you're getting a lot of functionality here. And so let's go and look at the asset management. This stuff here, this is really the differentiator between what's on premium versus what's on standard because these um, functionalities here of asset management is only going to be available for those premium and up. And so if you're really interested in this, this is where you're going to have to go to. Although I will say that if you're, as you saw based on the other stuff, right? You can get almost everything except that asset management if you're on the standard. My recommendation is to go check out plugins. There's other plugins in the marketplace that do asset management. And those are not going to cost you, what was it, $26 more than, than the standard version. So it's, it won't cost you $26 extra dollars a month per user. So I, I would reserve or I would opt out of this asset management because it's also super complex. It is really, really challenging to understand how to do. I've done a couple of them and it is just, it is so hard and so inconvenient. And I rather pay $5 a user and, and just use a plugin. <laughs> so that's just my two cents there. But as you can see, almost everything else here, you're gonna get across the board. Um, it is like really interesting. These data like, this is all new stuff that's coming. Um, I've been a beta user for this analytics and data lake stuff. You need a PhD. So don't even get excited about this stuff because I've been using it for maybe six months now, seven months now, and I have yet to use it successfully. You really need to be like a data scientist to be able to use this stuff. Like this was not created for the masses. So don't even worry that that's the, that this thing is only available for enterprise. And uh, that's pretty much it. So all some of these other things are just going to be some very, very basic things. So that's the difference between the different pricing. So hopefully I'm swaying you that if you are going to go down this route, assuming you have th more than three agents, you're probably going to go with the standard version. And so budget responsibly, because this is going to be an additional $21 above your Jira software license. So if somebody's going to use Jira software and Jira service management, 
you're going to be paying the whatever it is, eight something for your software, plus an extra twenty one dollars for standard JSM. And so now you're looking at like about thirty dollars a person. And that's assuming you're on standard Jira. If you're on Jira premium, then it's like fifteen dollars and twenty one dollars. So now things are getting a little bit more expensive there. So anyways. That's the pricing. That's the introduction to the marketing material. Uh, let me just check and see if there was anything else that I wanted to highlight. There is not. So the next thing that we're going to transition to is Atlassian's documentation. So like all the other Atlassian products out there, Atlassian has some pretty extensive documentation that should hopefully give you some sense of direction to be able to use this tool. If you use Jira, if you're used to the Jira interface, and this is going to apply to both like the user perspective and the administrator perspective. But if you've used Jira, this is going to feel very, very comfortable. You're not, it's not like relearning a whole new tool. In fact, I would, I would argue that it's closer in like similarities between JSM and Jira than Jira is to Confluence. Like I feel like when I go to the Confluence UI, I'm not in Jira anymore. I'm clearly in a different product, even though Atlassian tries their best to do, to make it look and feel the same. But Jira service management and Jira software, like you literally, you won't know. Like it's so, it's so similar. Like it, unless you really, really train on this stuff, like you're really not going to know whether you're in one versus the other. Like, I mean, the, the changes are so subtle and I'll highlight them all to you once we jump into Jira here in a couple minutes. But let me kind of show you the documentation. Let me try to pinpoint or highlight some important thing that you should know um, because these this documentation is is really powerful there's there's a lot of information i personally don't like at last uh, documentation though because it's just links everywhere and it's like there's no tree structure i'm a very visual like i like a tree type of learner but everything's out here so there's there's things for um like best practices i recommend you come in here because these are going to be very val valuable for you. There's a lot of information on like how to best think about using JSM. There's going to be a lot of like how do you use JSM to help your customers out. And so there's there's a lot of like how do you create or customize your Jira service management so that you have the right queues, so that you're collecting the right information, so that your end users have um, insight into what's happening to their support tickets and stuff like that. A lot of good documentation. We're going to cover some of the basics here. And then there's just general, like in theory, like what ITSM is all about. So we can talk about like tracking changes, incidents, problems, um, just requests and stuff like that. So a lot of great documentation here. I sometimes, I, I still prefer like the book. And so I actually like prefer looking at like at the data center version just because, oh, this exact page does not exist. We found a bug in that last instance documentation. What? Their pages don't exist. <laughs> I prefer to look at it from here because they have like a guide and these guides are a little, they usually flow a little bit more like the way I like to read my documentation. And if I'm not mistaken, they sometimes also have like a PDF version that you might be able to Google. And so this is kind of how I like to look at it because I just don't like the way Jira service management is set up. It's kind of weird. It's kind of wonky. But anyways, assuming you kind of know what you're doing, um, you can look at this guide for admins and then I can click on whatever topics are interesting to you. I'm going to talk about the most important things, the most common things that I typically do in JSM. Um, but feel free to look through this documentation. This is the quickest way to get up to speed because there's just so much. The product is quite involved. You can take like an entire eight hour course just learning JSM. And so there's a lot happening here um, that you should definitely be looking at through at through their documentation so that you can kind of get familiar with what you can do. So you can see there's a guide for admins and then there's a guide for the user. So whenever you see agents, you're really talking about just end user or the users of the JSM tool, not the customers. We'll talk about the customers in a different section too. Okay. So with that said, we're going to be transitioning um, from the documentation, from this boring stuff, and we're going to go into JSM itself. I have my own um, product here set up, but before we do, I do want to highlight um, a couple things here. And so that is, it assumes that what we're about to embark, it assumes that you basically purchased either the free version or the standard version, but you should already have JSM. Um, I'm going to skip those details because I've already done it <clears throat> and I can't easily reshow it. So 
I'm assuming that you already have JSM, but if it's not, then you just got to go to alassian.com slash try and you can eventually, if my computer loads, you will come down to Jira Service Management. Sorry, where is it? They're here. You can do try cloud and then you'll basically go through the thing and set it up and, and get going. So this right here, super easy. If you've ever done Jira, it's going to be the same thing but it's really, really easy to get set up. So that's like the biggest thing, all right? So let's jump into Jira Service Management. Oh, and the other way here is if you, a second way of, of getting the um, Jira JSM, if you haven't already gotten it, is this JSM might be down here somewhere under Discover and it'll have a button that says try. So if you click on it, then it'll kind of go through the phases of, of helping you purchase it. Um, but I got the JSM here, I'm gonna switch to it and the first thing that we're looking at is this interface. This should look exactly like Jira. In fact, if I click this little X, I am now showing my JSM projects, my Jira software projects, my Jira work management projects, and my Jira product discovery projects. So I'm showing everything. And so as you can see, within the same URL, within the same interface, I can just highlight those JSM projects. <clears throat> the biggest indicator that tells me that I'm in JSM is that these now say service management. This right here is essentially what indicates to me that we're not in Kansas anymore and that we're in fact using a, serv a, a JSM project as opposed to a Jira software project. Because if you look at the other ones, they'll say like company managed software, company managed business, whatever it is. So that's that key indicator. And it's just kind of just, Getting you to getting you accustomed to seeing and understanding and maybe even appreciating that JSM is feeling a whole lot like Jira so far. And all we've done is just go one step in. And so let me click into an actual project here. And let me just review my notes so I know exactly what I was supposed to be talking about here. So um, yep. So let me kind of walk you through this interface. As you can see, I am in my JSM. I'm still saying Jira because even when I click into JSM directly, it's just gonna say Jira. So everything that, that we love and know and care about Jira, that your work, your projects, your filters, dashboards, plans, all that stuff, it's gonna be in this interface. So it's all here because it's it's just, it's not like when I switch to Confluence, this is what I was talking about earlier. When I switch to Confluence, the interface changes, the navigation change, the product change. And so there is a difference there, but when you're looking at Jira and J JSM, again, to the untrained person, you're really not gonna see a whole lot of difference. So let's uh, talk about creating a project. I wanna kind of show you where things start getting a little bit more interesting. So now when you click on create a project, you have your standard Jira software. So these are all the Jira software projects. And if you've ever seen one of my videos on like JWM, I did these like way back in like, February timeframe earlier in the year, then I've done, I've kind of walked you through some of these, but what we're going to look at today is Jira service management. And these are again, just templates that Atlassian has put together for you. And it manipulates the, the requests that are available, the issue types that are available and kind of like the form a little bit. So there is some uh, significant influence here, but in general, I almost always pick just a general service management for IT teams. This is my default um, selection of a template. I like this one. It's simple. It will basically give you the, the form, which we're going to go over the portal, more commonly known. It'll give you that. Um, it is super, super basic workflow, which I almost always end up customizing anyway. So it doesn't matter what comes here. But the request types are very, very key. You get the ask a question, you get the email request, and then you get a simple submit a request or incident. So really, really, really easy to get started. Um, it is not very overwhelming. If you pick the first one, which is the ITSM, the IT service management, this one is complex. As you can see, we get a whole lot more options here. We get a whole lot of different um, request types. And so we're getting like IT help. And so all of these, it, these are all unique request types. Some you may need, some you may not need. There's a lot of overkill in here. And, and so I typically caution against this 
Because unless you're like 100% committed to JSM and you're like, you know exactly what you want, this can be very overwhelming. So I don't recommend that you go with the IT service management template if you're a beginner. If you're a seasoned vet and you know exactly what you're doing, you're going to want this one because this one gives you all the bells and whistles. But if you're kind of just starting off and you're, you're just trying to figure out what JSM is, how you can use it, pick this template. You will thank me later. So once you do the template, actually, I'm actually not going to do one because I already have one. So I'm just going to jump into that project. And that's this one here. And so now let me walk you through this interface here and kind of show you what's going on here and highlight some of the things here. So if you're using Jira software, and maybe just for comparison's sake, I am going to open up my Jira. <clears throat> and I'm just going to go open up a regular software one. And so as you can see, the interface different, clearly, very different, but not too different. The navigation on the left is not going to be exactly the same, but you still got your navigation on the left, and then you got your items in the middle. So there's no board. You don't get a backlog. You don't get sprints. You don't get a roadmap. You don't get reports like this. You don't get components, you don't get code, you don't get releases. You don't get any of that because this is not a so this is not intended for software development. This is intended for tracking problems, not even bugs, but just like requests from people and then like doing something with that. So what you do get is a queue, which is the same thing as like issues. So if I looked at issues over here, this is just a laundry list of all the stuff that's in here. And so my queue is pretty much just all the stuff that's in this tool and the fields that I've selected. You can modify these things so you can pick what fields actually show up and you're just, you're just gonna see everything. Now, you do have the option to add more cues and these are kind of start functioning like filters. So if you've ever been on the filters over here where you can see like, show me all the open issues, show me all the done issues, show me all the issues that are reported by me. If you've ever played with this, then the adding multiple cues is going to feel a little bit more familiar because you can see already, show me all the ones assigned to me, show me all the ones that are unassigned, and you can add an infinite number. I don't want to say infinite because that's a strong word, but you can add basically your own cues based on whatever criteria you have um, so, that, so that you can kind of organize instead of just having like blah, all, all the open issues. Instead of just having them all thrown out there, you can get a little bit more creative and... Um, essentially just, again, organize your data. So that's one big key difference, right? This is that everything is kind of out there. And instead of going to a backlog, instead of going to a board to visualize things, you're just going to get a list. You're going to get a list of all the work. Um, all these are sortable, so you can sort them by reporter, by assignee, by status, by whatever you want here. Um, you can add more fields, like I explained. And so this is like a really, really key differentiator here between Jira and J um, JSM because you're going to see this difference. Hey, to the person that just joined, now that I have two people in here, <laughs> I want to take a second because I've actually, um, over the last couple of live streams, I've been, we've been talking about t-shirts. And so not sure who you are, but I wanted to take a little quick time out and, and talk about the t-shirts that I made. So I've actually made a t-shirt and this one's, let me see if I can lower this. So I made one that says, I heart Jira. And um, I just, we got some inspiration. We got a couple people in the previous chats talking about these different t-shirts that we can make. And so I went and made a poll. I don't know if you got a chance to vote, but I made a poll. So I just wanted to show them off real quick. I got the straight out of Jira here. And so I got this one. So let me know in the chat here if you like any of these. Um, we're just trying things out um, and seeing what resonates with the audience here. I got the, it's not a bug, it's a feature. Um, so I like that one a lot. We got the got Jira. So I really like this one too. So if you've ever seen the commercial for like Get Milk, you'll like that one. And then the final one that I got is a scrum life is a happy life. So anyways, just want to take a quick just shout out since I have an extra person in here that I have made a couple shirts in the future. Not sure when. I'm still kind of working out the logistics, but we are going to be putting up a like storefront. Uh, YouTube does allow me to sell like merch. And so I thought these were going to be kind of cool to do like an iHeart Jira or, or something just Jira related so you can nerd out in the office 
or show off to your coworker. So storefront coming soon. And thank you to everybody that voted. Really, really did mean a lot. And we were able to kind of get some shirts going. So if, you, if you're if you interested, let me know in the comments here in the chat um, just to kind of see how much, um, if there's any interest at all. I just made these because I also kind of struggle to figure out what I want to wear <laughs> during my videos. And I'm going to be making like shorts and TikToks and all that other stuff. And so I just wanted to have something to wear. And so I, I really, really like that we opened it up for everybody to kind of vote on what you like. This one was actually the winner, the straight out of Jura was the most popular option. And so look forward to in the future, we'll, we'll have a link. We'll be able to sell these and you'll be able to get your own Jura shirt. So hopefully you enjoy that. So anyways, back to Jura and back to comparing the differences between Jura and, and um, service management. All right. So we just had concluded that Q was like the first one. Q was like the first big difference here where instead of the backlogs, instead of the sprint boards, you're going to get a Q. So that's the first big difference. Now, the next big difference is how you interact with this tool. In Jira, because you have your backlog, you come, you typically come to your backlog over here, and then you can add items in the bottom or through the roadmap. I think I have a video of like six different ways of adding issues into Jira. So there's quite a, quite a variety of adding issues to Jira. But for JSM, what I really, really like about JSM is you get this thing called a portal. And this portal, you can click on it, and it actually has its own URL. And in this URL, you basically get to create, like this is completely customizable. You can change like what shows up here, what text shows up here. This is an advanced thing that I have in a video that's going to be com coming out like in a month. Um, but this is like a knowledge base. Again, more of an advanced topic. I have a separate Jira video that's going to be coming out with that. But... The most primary thing that you do is this request. And so you can see that I have a general and I have need approval as so I can click on them. And when I'm here, I can see all the different options that I have. So I'm just going to have like computer support and then your users just fill out their computer support. My computer isn't turning on. And then you can put like click the power button nothing and that's always a worst case scenario right so hopefully i'm not jinxing myself because i want my computers to keep working they can attach a file maybe they have a picture they have a video they have whatever and again every single thing here is completely customizable i'm gonna show you how all these things get customized in a second but once your individuals submit this they can hit send and then it's going to show up in the queue now what's great about this is that anybody doing this anybody submitting these kind of tickets here does not consume a license. They're part of that unlimited customers. And so again, if you have a company with like two, three, four, eight hundred people, a thousand people, and you're managing like an IT help desk, everybody in your company can access this URL for your portal and then basically submit requests as they see fit. Now there's other use cases for this. You don't have to run this in an IT. You can use this to like gather product requirements. Maybe somebody has an idea that they want to submit. And so this is one way for anybody without a Jira software license to be able to submit ideas. Um, maybe they found a bug. And so this is a way for you ship your software and there's a bug with your software. Now your clients, your customers, whoever you're shipping your software to can come into this portal and basically submit like, hey, I have a bug. I've seen other other folks that make their their cues to track like just internal processes. So whatever, like literally you can if you want to get data, if you want somebody else to submit or fill out information, but you don't want to pay for the license, then this is like how you do it. Oh, sorry, Jerick, I totally missed that you uh, sent a comment here. So you got catching you at this time is just weird. Love the T-shirts. Oh, yeah, because you're on my coast. Welcome to the best coast, West Coast. Um, but yeah, thanks for the t-shirts. Um, those were all your idea because you told me that we should make t-shirts. So I went and made t-shirts. Uh, oh yeah, and submit. Yeah, so this is a great one, right? So like I could technically create just a, a uh, internet facing portal where if you guys have ideas for questions of like specific videos that you'd like for me to make or, or answer specific questions on like content, I can create one of these portals, open it up to everybody, and y'all can go crazy submitting like requests. So again, I don't have to pay for your licenses and I get the information that I need 
and then I can go and help you out and solve these problems. So you can be infinitely custom, like very, get very creative with what you do with JSM here. But again, the beauty of it is it's free that you don't, you aren't paying for the licenses and that's what people use. Now I will give you a teaser. Another reason why folks like JSM, and I do have a dedicated video. I've actually already recorded it. It's going to come out in a few weeks, but what you see here is these guides. So these are actual direct connections back into my Confluence. And this is just exposing Confluence pages in the portal. This is great because again, if you don't want to pay for the Confluence license, but you want pretty much anybody in your company to come and see a specific Confluence page, you can expose it here and they can look through it and basically see, because this is just the Confluence page, but within the Jira world. So this is a pretty cool, interesting way of, of again, kind of, I don't want to call it cheating at Lassian, but you definitely are not having to pay the whole price for um, all of these um, products or, or use cases here. So that's what's what's happening here. Now, you may remember I did submit something. Um, if you're an end user, like your, your employees or your team, they'll just come up here to the request. They'll be able to see the request that they submitted. And they'll be able to see the statuses that your internal team is basically updating. So they don't need a license to go in. They don't even need to go into JSM. They're just going to navigate and utilize this portal here and just be able to see what is or isn't happening or what's the status. And then they can kind of go probe on it. They can open it up. It'll stay open here. They can comment into the team and go, hey, what's going on? Uh, why are you taking so long? Um, they can cancel the request. They can resolve it if it's kind of like obsolete. They can share with other folks if they want to share with another stakeholder or somebody that's also like interested in this. They can definitely do that. And obviously, they're going to see the status here. So this is the portal. Again, no charge for this. And so this is, again, one of the big selling features of like why folks use JSM because completely different use case, but it's there's cases, right? Your team may need something like this, and JSM could be that answer. So coming back to the queue, um, I'm going to go look for that um, that ticket that I just created. So if I come here and sort by created, I should be able to see the computer isn't turning on. And so now on the, on the Jira side, so now I'm actually in Jira service management. Now I'm seeing what my end user requested. So here is typically going to be all those fields that I would have had. In this particular case, I only had one field, the description, but like any Jira software project, you can pretty much create any custom field and stick it in here and then expose it. And I'll show you how to do that in a second as well. But you can expose all this and completely customize your forms to capture whatever it is you need to capture. So you'll see the, the information from the portal will be here. You could also optionally have additional internal custom fields that are not exposed to your clients or to your customers. Those would show up over here on the right. Um, you can move things around just like you do in a regular Jira software project. And at this point, this right here and an actual story. So if I, like, if I open up a, an issue here, they should pretty much look exactly the same, right? So we have our details. We have our the meat of all the information, the common, the history, the more fields, right? So these are looking exactly the same at this point. And this is where I was telling you again that sometimes you just can't tell the difference between JSM and Jira at all because... They are so closely related. Um, you do get a couple of extra things, though, that are like the similar request comes out here. Um, you get linked assets, which comes out here. And so there are some couple of things like this SLA is completely new. This approver, this is a very interesting thing. I'll briefly mention this because, again, I have dedicated videos that I'm launching. Um, I basically have recorded every video between now and the end of the year. And so now I'm kind of putting the horse before the cart. Or the cart before the horse. I forget. I forget the way that that goes. <clears throat> but anyways, um, you can add an approver so that if you want, if you want to like block, if you want to block the process so that somebody is actually buying off on this, you can come in here and put that approver's name. In my case, it's just me. And so they will actually get an email notification with like the buttons to approve, or they can come into the ticket and approve if they have a license. And if they don't have a license, worry not they can just come to that portal which again is completely free accessible by everybody and they can just come over here to approvals 
and then they'll see that there's some approvals that they need to go do. They can click on it and then they'll have the approve or decline button here. Now at last in, why you not be consistent with the blue here and the green over here? I do not know. But anyways, once they approve it, um, you'll it'll move to the next step and and you do get a paper trail. So now you know who approved it, who rejected it, things of that nature. So again, this is not something you can do in Jira software. This is something that when you're doing the workflow configurations, this is an added thing that you can do. And this is uh, yet another use case or business case for why folks, they, they kind of use Jira service management in tangent with Jira because there's just capability that one has that the other doesn't that it just helps make decisions. So if you've ever struggled to capture approvals in Jira, well, try creating a JSM project where anybody, any manager, any VP, any director can approve things, but only select few individuals will then work. That way you don't have to buy so many licenses. So there's so many clever ways to get around this very, very expensive license here. Um, so that's kind of that interface there. Let me see what else I want to talk about here. So we got the portal, we got the queue. Um, we got there. Let me kind of just show you now behind the scenes how to modify some things. So from an administrator perspective, I showed you what the queues look like. I showed you what the portal looks like. And so now let me show you what you can modify and how things look over here. So this again, these settings are going to look very similar to that of Jira software but you do get some JSM specific things. For example, you're going to get like request types. This is completely new. You don't get all these request types. You don't even get request types at all in Jira software. So this is this right here is what drives the portal. And so as you can see, um, we have that customer support that we used earlier. We can essentially like click into it. From here, we have the request form. And so this is where I can bring in uh, fields like I can I could have brought the due date I could have brought the priority and then I can preview it so then when I preview my form will show me what it looks like um, for some reason it's not showing it to me here but these extra fields that maybe I can make re required um, I can essentially make sure that they show up on the portal so that whenever my end user is filling it out they have to fill it out now I don't know why it's not showing up right now I obviously did not do my offering to my to the demo gods before this but you can essentially bring in some fields i think some fields just might be very specific but there's there should be for the most part you should be able to bring in any custom field which is really the important one you should be able to bring in those custom fields maybe i gotta save uh, you know what? i probably have to save the changes then hit preview and then yeah there we go now all these fields that i brought in rookie mistake um so all those fields now i can make them required or or if you don't like due date, right, maybe due date trips people up. We'll just call it like like delivery date, right? And now I don't even need to modify the field. I can just change it in the form. And when I click preview, <clears throat> you'll see that now it says delivery date. So you can reuse a lot of the same fields without having to go and recreate new fields. So this is kind of cool, really interesting, easy way to just very quick and dirty, just capture the information you want to capture put it in a form that anybody can submit for free and then have your team adjudicator do something with it. Um, you can get the issue view. So now on for the internal folks, for the licensed folks, the, your agents, you can kind of move fields around so that they show up in different places. And then you have your workflow statuses so that like you see. So when your customer is looking at the different workflows, like you can change what they see. So rather than seeing your like your raw status of whatever is built into your Jira, you can opt in to do like a more customer friendly view. I've never done those changes, but it's available for you. Um, but yeah, you go back to the request types. Um, the request types are tied to issue types. So this obviously is now we're starting to get into like a little 201 level stuff. So look forward to like future videos where I will show you explicitly like, hey, here's how we add an issue type and here's how we add a request type to it. But it's super, super simple. Uh, once you kind of get the hang of it, now, the reason, if you recall correctly, like when I told you like, hey, you should start with like that basic one, it, it restricts the number of issue types and all this other stuff. Because as you can see, if you're new, this can be very overwhelming. Like if you don't need all this stuff, then it can just kind of be noise and it can just kind of just overcomplicate things. And so 
you want to be careful when you're creating that project because when you pick those templates that I showed you at the beginning, that's going to influence what shows up here. So I kind of like to start with just the one item, which is that, hey, I have a problem. And then I add from there. Or if you're, again, if you're a little bit more skilled, you can take these and repurpose these. So instead of IT help, you can always come in here and just name it something else. So instead of IT help, just call it like, I don't know, Jura help, right? And then you can, you can change this, like general support for Jura. And so when you save these changes and you hit the preview, like it'll be called that new stuff. You can also change those icons. So if you don't like this little icon, you can change the icon to something else. Um, and save it. And I, I don't, I think you can upload your own thing. Um, but the most important thing, the, at least the most common thing is folks usually do custom fields here on the right. And then they're, they're basically creating that form. And these forms is usually where like as a Jira admin, where I spend the most amount of time because I'm customizing this form to be very unique to what my team is actually looking for. Now, aside from that, this is a fairly new feature. Let me just hit save. Here, um, Atlassian recently, um, I don't know, Jira guy, if you're still on the call here, but Atlassian recently had um, acquired like somebody before we used to have to use like something like pro forma, but now they have a lot more information on forms. I personally haven't used the form yet. Um, I still tick, stick to the tried and true methods of creating my, my portal, but you can start exploring and maybe I'll do a, a video because it's the best way to learn. Is by me doing a video on how to do the form, but you do get these forms that basically allow you to do something that's a little bit more pleasant to the eyes, <laughs> I guess is what I'll call it. They're a little bit more uh, just, again, just easier to read, right? And so you get different options. There's just a weird form where they have like a pre, pre, like pre-selected fields or information that you can bring in and then you can just kind of edit stuff as you need it. And so interesting things um, here. I, again, I still prefer the old method, but this is one of the newer methods where you can create these more pretty looking forms. Um, but some questions that I would have, because again, I just don't know enough about it is, do you need a license to submit this form? Because if you do, then it kind of defeats the purpose of doing the portal. But then at last, and being really smart that like, hey, we can give you cool functionality, but now you got to pay for it. So I don't know. I'm speculating, but that's what I would assume is is what's happening. So I again, I've never done one. So I'm just going to save one just to kind of see what, what happens here. I'm going to go back into it, raise a request, see if it shows up anywhere. I don't think it does. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it does it anywhere. So um, yeah, it, it's kind of like one of those things where... I don't even know how to get to it. <laughs> so uh, I'll take a more look at that though and, and I'll, I'll keep reviewing and, and try to figure out the forms. Definitely look for a, a future video, probably in 2023 at this point where we do talk about the forms, but that's the interesting thing there. Uh, the knowledge base, I kind of briefly touched on this, but if you are going to be doing that integration with Confluence, like this is where you would come and essentially link and create categories so that you can categorize your your um your section here. So if you want to do like Jira information, you can create a category for that. And then any page that it'll, it's called an article, but any page that is like, you can now group it into the right section so that these things only show up in the right um, page. So it's, it's kind of interesting. A lot of, a lot of powerful stuff here that again, you just don't get this level of, of control with just Jira software. And so highly recommend you you give this a go and just kind of try it out. Uh, the reports are going to be very based on JSM. So these are really more res like based on like SLAs, which I'm going to talk about right now. But a lot of these reports are going to be like, hey, we're, we got a bunch of issues. Have we been able to resolve these issues on time? Because again, remember that the focus of JSM is really more from like an IT perspective. But as I've shown to you and kind of given you different use cases here, you don't have to use this tool as a as an IT like queue. You can use it for pretty much whatever you want. So th your mileage is going to vary with some of these reports, but just know that these are kind of built in. You do get this really interesting satisfaction one, and I thought this was really cool because when you're in the portal and you're looking at your specific requests, um, let me see if I can open it up here. No, I don't want to look at this one. I want to see the one that I've that I've created. Uh, you can. And I think you can turn this on or off. 
I don't know. I don't think I have it on yet, but there's like a way for you to like rate your experience. And when you rate your experience, you get your satisfaction here. So those are those are kind of interesting to see. Um, coming down back in the in the permissions, we can do like customer permissions here. And um, the customer permissions are what can your customers do? So like anyone allowed is allowed to see it or specific ones can only see it. Like who can share um, on the portal settings. This is like, what do people see? So you can change that text that I showed you at the beginning. You can add your company logo. You can make announcements. Um, you can customize the, the layout of your help center. So one thing to note though, is if your company has a lot of JSM projects, they are all going to go to the same help center. And then as you see here, every Jira project is going to have its own thing here. So every JSM project is going to have like its own rectangle. And so they're all going to be like smushed in here. So you do want to be kind of mindful of that and, and be careful to, to like clearly name things and maybe not name. I've, I've seen teams where they name all the forms the same thing. And then you're like, well, which one's which? And so that can be very confusing. Um, so that is that. Um, you also get email requests. So this one's actually really interesting. I should probably blur this out. I should no. I'm gonna go away from that because I don't want to get everybody submitting me emails. But you could, in theory, just email that email, and then you'll get email. You'll get tickets automatically created. So that one's a really cool feature too because maybe your customers or your users just have no idea what the problem is or they don't know what they want. They just know that they need help, and so they can just email this particular email, and every JSM project gets its own unique email. So it's not like a shared thing across everybody. And so they can email that one email and then a ticket will automatically come in. And when it comes in, let me see if I'm not back on my email because I don't want to show that email because I don't want you all emailing me. <laughs> um, instead of the issue type here, uh, you'll get you'll get an issue type. Let me let me go to the request type here. There is one. There should be one here for email. Ah, it went away. There is one here at the very bottom for email request. And let me get my head out of the way. So you can see that it'll come in as this type, but it'll be an emailed request. And so again, you can do whatever you want with it. You can convert it. Maybe your team has to triage it and uh, like adjudicate it. Then they can convert it and go, oh, well, this is really like they're asking for a purchase of over $100. And then you can like change the request type from, from email request to like purchase over $100 or something like that. So very customizable here, but really a neat feature too, because then this opens it up for like external people from your company you just give them an email and like all your customer support is now handled through this particular email. Uh, coming down, customer no customer notifications. So you can control here what notifications people get. Uh, one thing to note is when your team is working on an issue, since we do have this clear divider between who is a licensed user, your agent, and who is the customer, the non-licensed user, you can actually in the bottom here, at the bottom over here, you can differentiate between a comment that goes external. So like I can go, this is a rude comment, right? And so if I post that, this was going to be only internal. As you can see, it's, it's yellowed out here. And when I go look at this issue, I'm going to go look at demo 13 on the portal. So if I go to the portal, I go to created by me. Yes, yes, yes. And I go look for demo 13 you'll see that I don't see the comment that says this is a rude comment. But if I want to communicate to my customer and go like, what's your name? Question mark, because you know, English. And I do that. Then when I come over here and again, I'm an unlicensed user and I hit refresh, I'm going to see my comment of what's your name. And then I can reply, well, it's Sam, <laughs> right? Or whatever you want to put here. But now this is how you can interact with your non-licensed users. Or if you're like internally, like just trying to do like a little group huddle and you're like, hey team, I have no idea how to fix this. Somebody help me. I can do internal notes so that we can talk to each other internally and keep like a laundry list of all the communication without exposing it out to your clients. So that's another cool little feature that in Jira, you just get a comment and everybody gets the comments. So again, trying to kind of balance it out between what the differences are. Um, and then since we are running out of time here, I do want to show you one more thing here that is really, really important. You've probably seen these SLAs. And, and so this is kind of obvious. It's really big. And I really like the SLAs because in Jira, you don't get this notion of an SLA. And in case you're wondering what the heck is an SLA, it's a service level agreement. It's basically a contract between you and your customer 
and you're agreeing to certain conditions or certain things. And so in Jira, you can actually define what those are. So I'm going to come back over here. There's an entire section for SLAs and I can add whatever SLAs I want, but these are the two that you're going to get. And the first one you get is your time to first response. And that basically means is the second that somebody submits a ticket, how long did it take for somebody internally, somebody that does have a license, how long did it take them to actually do something, right? Like say, hello, um, just engage back with the customer and tell them like, hey, we got the ticket and we're going to be working on it. So you can measure that and you can set the time. You It comes by default with like two hours for the highest priority and then eight hours for if it doesn't have priority equals highest. All of this is completely customizable. You can spend days just kind of customizing all this stuff. Um, and your flags are like your conditions are like whenever whenever your like assignee goes from to an like from an unassigned to assigned, when it goes to to assign, when it's just changed in general, whenever the customer has a comment, when you put a comment for the customer, here's a resolution, or when you enter any of your statuses. So these are going to be unique to the statuses that you have, and so any of these can be different triggers. And so this this particular item is as soon as the issue is created, I'm gonna start a counter, and then I can pause it because maybe I'm blocked, maybe things are happening, right? So I can like I can do pending, and so I can say, hey, if I ever move it to the status of pending, pause the timer and don't don't ding me because I'm actually kind of just trying to figure it out still, right? So you might have like a block status or waiting for customer input. This is a really key one, right? Because like. I want to pause the thing. Like if I'm waiting for my customer to like to reply back to me, I don't want to be dinged because I'm waiting for you to give me information that I need to actually answer the question. So you can add these like pause to the timers and then you can set like, well, what's actually going to stop the timer. And so in this particular case, it'll be like, well, any of these conditions here are going to stop the timer. So you can save that or you can add your own, but that's the SLA one. That's just the, the normal one that comes in. Um, and then the other one you get is the resolution, which basically means is like how long is it taking from the moment something came in to the moment it actually got done. And so like that's just measuring like throughput of how many tickets we can fix and how long it's taking my team to fix these particular issues. So uh, again, the same same information, right? But you just change these things to kind of, um, I don't know, whatever, whatever is important and whatever you're trying to track. Um, but you can define as many of these as you want. You can set them up and, and Jira will kind of give, give you a bunch of different timers. And then on the queue, back in your queue, you can add these, right? So I have the time to resolution, but I can also add my down here. I can do time to first response. So when I hit save, I'll get those two different timers on the queue. So I can now sort by the ones that are my problem childs and I can go out, go and put, poke the person that's assigned that ticket and like, hey, why haven't you responded to these people? So those are there as well. And so that's that's a lot of the different customization that you can do. And those are the basics. Those are the main uh, specific basics that you can do. And the last thing that I'm going to do, because I know I said that last time, but this is for real is the last thing, is on people. So the managing of the axis is a little bit different. You only are going to pay. So you, a couple of things to consider. If you didn't watch, if you weren't in at the beginning, make sure you go watch the beginning because I know many of you kind of dropped in or jumped in a little bit later. But <clears throat> you do have to pay $21 for that standard or $47 for that premium license. So just enabling the license doesn't give them access to the project. That just, just like in Jira, you can give somebody a Jira license, but until you give them access to a specific project, they're not going to access that project. So when you add somebody to your JSM project, you have the option of making them an administrator, which is going to give them access to everything, or you want to make sure you give them service desk team. This is very, very, very important. Service desk team is going to allow that individual to be able to do stuff in your Jira, change the statuses, add internal, external comments, stuff like that. You optionally, you don't have to do this, but optionally for all your external people, people that are not licensed, you can just give them the customer. Now, the advantage of doing this is now you can tag them and kind of talk to them and, and stuff like that. So this was more optional, but at the very minimum, this is really the one you need, service desk team, or if they really, if you want them to be able to delete 
things from the queue, delete the request, or change any of the settings, you can make them an administrator. But at the minimum, you want to give them that JSM license, and then you want to add this service desk team. Very, very different than, than your traditional Jira software project. So anyways, we're right up at the hour mark here. So I that's kind of the basics. That's all you really need to kind of get started. There's obviously a bunch of other stuff like with the workflows and things like that. But we, we can save those for a future video. And um, a lot of the workflow stuff is going to carry over from Jira anyways. There isn't anything special about the workflows. Like the status is the status. The only d key differentiators that that approval that I showed earlier. But I already got a future video that's going to come out for that. Um, but other than that, like those are those are the basics. That's literally what you need. And so hopefully you found this video beneficial. If you're completely starting out with JSM, hopefully this that kind of gets your footing in the right direction. If you're interested in the shirts, let me know. Jura guy, hopefully you're interested because this is kind of <laughs> you peer pressure me into doing this a little bit. So if you're interested into the shirts, um, let me know. Um, we are going to be putting up a like a storefront very, very soon here. So thank you for everybody that voted. And if you have any names, any clever names or whatever, just in the comment section, let me know and maybe I can give you a little credit and um, send you a shirt or whatever for your contribution if, if people like it and we actually make it into a shirt. So this is just the beginning of this endeavor. Thank you to everybody that tuned in. Really, really appreciate you all being here. And um, I will see you all next week. We're, we're coming down to the last couple of live streams here before the end of the year. So I appreciate everybody that tunes in and, and is able to participate in these things. So make sure you drop a like. If you made it this far and you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. We are growing really, really fast. This channel is just like taking off. I'm trying to hit 3,000 subs by the end of the year. So if you haven't subbed or you know somebody that hasn't subbed, make sure you reach out to them and tell them to help the channel out. Let's get to 3,000. We got like five weeks, six weeks left here. So let's crush that goal and let's hit help me hit those 3,000 subs here before. The so anyway, that's it for this one. Thank you very much. And I'll see you next week. Bye. I feel nauseous, believe me Never had a lot of sh** come easy Had to work hard, struggle just to be me Had to rise up just so they could see me Did what I had to do just to feed me And what was left over I put towards my dreaming But the only thing in life that has meaning Are the things you gotta work for, believe me Take into your hands a plan Your own hands can land your own brand And damn, I feel like no one takes accountability They want the credit Ability, convincingly unwilling to put in the f hours it takes to get some power Don't be f***ing sour, take a cold shower Scream until you're louder, work until you're prouder And f*** all the doubters, they're just your downers I swear to God they all let me down I always fought just to wear the crown I'm f***ed off at these f***ing clowns Hoover up top, they deserve it now It's only worth it if you work for it it's only worth it if you work for it I won't stop till they hear me now I won't stop till I wear the crown